Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Dr. Sharma, who is the chairman of the Telecommunication Regulatory Authority of India. Dr. Sharma, great to see you. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like Always. to start off by talking a little bit about uh, ADHAR. Perhaps you could tell us what ADHAR is. I noticed uh, that some people are uh, still not uh, certain what it is in the, uh, in the meeting that's going on here at the moment, the Fiji Security Clinic, which is why we're here. Um, what are the, uh, perhaps you can also tell us also what the security features are that preserve confidentiality, integrity, and non-repudiation of digital financial services uh, transactions of consumers in India. But let's, let's talk, start off by introducing Aadhaar and telling us a little bit about it. Aadhaar actually is a digital identity platform which India created about, you know, nine years back. And now about 1.2 billion Indians have got this number. Aadhaar literally means platform or foundation. And this is actually an identity, which is a foundational identity, which means it can be plugged into any domain. So any domain, whether it is financial, you know, transactions or it is getting a telecom SIM or it's getting a subsidized uh, food grain, every domain uh, requires to authenticate your identity. So Aadhaar, uh, while it gives identity, it also provides a service uh, which is called authentication service to people who are doing transactions at the point of transactions. So now we have scaled up to such an extent that in one year, we have got about 8 billion authentication transactions, which means every Aadhaar holder is, is you know, authenticating on an average about seven and eight times a year, which is basically to get telephone connections or to get subsidized rations or to get direct benefit transfers of subsidies into their accounts. So various kinds of applications are riding on top of Aadhaar. One important application which is riding is financial inclusion. And obviously by its very nature, all this infrastructure has got to be secure and robust. So there are certain uh, principles which we had uh, incorporated in the design of Aadhaar, which essentially make it secure, uh, which is we collected minimal information, which is every time you authenticate, then you get informed on your mobile and your email that you have authenticated. So if somebody else is trying to authenticate on your behalf, then you know you, you can always complain that somebody is doing so. There could be an alert put in because of the information. We also, Aadhaar does not know what for you are authenticating. So Aadhaar's authentication is purpose agnostic. So, so these are some of the features which are built into Aadhaar, which preserve the confidentiality, which preserve, you know, which is basically consent and notice to the participant in authentication and which actually keeps a minimal kind of uh, 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 you know federated database in some sense that you we only keep the logs of authentication we don't know the purpose of the authentication and we don't know what transaction was conducted and therefore it is a federated data structure which is which again ensures confidentiality and privacy you mentioned digital financial inclusion how many people are still not uh, registered with aadhaar no, as I said, uh, 1.2 billion, we have a 1.3 billion population, so everybody is registered. Every adult in India, 96%, 97% have got Aadhaar, so, so that's not, inclusion is not an issue in terms of getting Aadhaar. Now, inclusion in terms of financial services is, is another uh, important thing, and there Aadhaar has played a key, key role in terms of the fact that you can open a bank account using Aadhaar's electronic KYC which means you don't have to pre present any papers. You authenticate yourself and you are able to open a bank account, number one. So, and, and, sec and that is why India actually, they, they, there's, a, there's a prime minister's uh, program to open bank accounts called Janadhan. Now there India opened about 300 million bank accounts in a matter of four or five months using the Aadhaar's electronic KYC infrastructure. So essentially Aadhaar becomes a tool to access various systems, number one. And number two, then we built applications where I can transfer money to you uh, using your Aadhaar identification or using your virtual payment ID. So we built a lot of products. So unified payment interface is a, is a set of protocols which India has built, which is uh, hugely scalable. Imagine on, on UPI, we are transacting 1 billion transactions a month, 1.2 billion to be more precise, a month and we are transjecting more than $25 billion a month on that. So it's a hugely scalable and it is all for free. 
so basically there is no transfer charge i can transfer money and these the, you i don't need to disclose my bank account to you i can do, just provide you my you know virtual payment address which can be just like my bank name at the rate icici.com or whatever so this is the this is the kind of level of uh, uh, confidentiality and and the robustness which it has brought about it's stunning i mean there was a supreme court ruling i understand regarding the privacy concerns about adhar perhaps you could just briefly give us a, a brief overview of the security features that have been introduced recently to address these concerns yes i think uh, the supreme court uh, ruling in fact uh, Uh, validated the fact uh, which which aadhar people were saying that it does not create any surveillance infrastructure it does not violate any users privacy so first of all the supreme court declared that the privacy is a fundamental right and then it set out to examine as to whether aadhar violates the that particular right or not and it came to the conclusion that it does not violate so first of all aadhar has validated the fact that aadhar does not violate uh, the, the sc has validated that aadhar does not violate privacy number 1 number 2 we have also for those people who are a little you know kind of concerned about their aadhar number being disclosed there have been a number of new innovations which have been put in place one is called virtual identity which means you don't for authentication you don't disclose your aadhar number you are provided a 16 digit random number again you can use that and the back end it aadhar can you know sort of uh, discern it as to what aadhar number it is and can authenticate to you so the entity with whom you are authenticating does not get hold of your aadhar number so virtual identity is one particular uh, innovation which has been done you can lock your uh, authentication you know you can say i'm not going to authenticate i don't need authentication for the time being so you can lock your biometrics which means that nobody else can allow can can try to authenticate on your behalf and when you require you can unlock them for the purpose for the period of the window for which you are doing authentication and again lock them so this locking and unlocking of biometrics and aadhar number is another feature which has been introduced then of course in the aadhar act there is a provision which says that if somebody tries to spoof somebody's aadhar number somebody tries to impersonate there are penalties you know so it's it's legally uh, you know protected in some sense that uh, you it is it provide legal protection to somebody who is trying to hack or some somebody who is trying to do some mischief on that so i think there are m- number of uh, steps which have been taken uh, uh, to ensure that we introduce more and more robustness Uh, and security features in aadhar yeah, talking about security security and data privacy are going to play obviously a key role in winning consumer confidence and catalyzing the adoption of fintech for financial inclusion i wanted to ask you would you agree with this statement and what's your perspective on this absolutely uh, security data security is very important data privacy is very important and unless you see i always say there are three c's which are required Uh, for a customer to to kind of you know do transactions one is confidence you know he must be confident that you know once he is doing transactions he is he is actually not going to lose money by some you know mechanism second is cost india is an extremely cost sensitive market so if the transaction is going to cost money then i will not do transactions so the second is second c is cost and third c is convenience if it is very convenient for me then i will do the transaction so cost convenient and confidence these three c's are important and what you are saying exactly is the same thing that you know it's very important if we want to do a large scale digital transformation including the banking transactions then we need to ensure that we preserve the integrity of these transactions by ensuring people that they can do uh, you know digital transactions with confidence and with convenience and with minimal cost you're here at the uh, Fiji Security Clinic here which is uh, one event that's happening in a, a, in a calendar a series of events here about fi- uh, financial inclusion uh, this financial inclusion global initiative by ITU and, and various other partners i wanted to ask you uh, what are you hoping to take away from this particular event actually i have attended the morning sessions today and i found that there are a lot of issues in the security part and i wanted to understand Uh, that what are the major uh, you know vulnerabilities which uh, systems are facing and as a telecom regulator what the telcos will have to what kind of security features telcos have to build in in order to ensure to their clients and ultimately the banks are their clients you know uh, the the people who are doing financial transactions are their clients 
how can they ensure that the clients are safe and secure so i think it has been very useful thus far and i hope to participate tomorrow also in this and, and ensure you know i probably the take away for me will be to uh, a little bit more awareness because i am not a technology expert i am a telecom regulator a public policy person and therefore it is for me from a technology perspective it is important to understand as to what the vulnerabilities and what the problems are and how we can from a policy perspective from a regulatory perspective how we can solve them i was going to ask you lastly as a regulator in this fast moving landscape how do regulators stay ahead of the game absolutely i mean this is also very important question because what is happening is that we have been you know used to regulating physical objects nowadays you have everything virtual so from a physical world to a digital and virtual world is a is a big transformation and therefore regulators are actually finding it sometimes very hard to gra grapple with this new reality and and therefore it is important for them to have uh, the the expertise and knowledge and and get the best out of all those experts uh to to remain ahead of the curve also another part i would say is that technology should not be the main um, you know way of regulating technology can be a tool to regulate but i think regulation must be based largely on principles and once you have these principles based regulation then in that case the role of technology and and the danger of being obsolete reduces to a very large extent Dr. Sharma, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Uh, pleasure to see you again as usual, and uh, we hope to catch up with you again in the very near future. Thank you very much. Thank you.